Welcome to Spirit World Broadcast with Reverend Austin Nabuko. John 16 verse 12. He said, I have yet many things. This was before Jesus died. Some weeks before his crucifixion. And he was talking to them. He said, I have yet many things to say unto you. But ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. I want you to take note of the word show you there. It's going to repeat about two more times. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of me and shall show it unto you. So how does he glorify me? By showing you my things. Verse number 15. And all things that the father had are mine. Therefore said I doth, he, the spirit of truth, the comforter, shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. That's the third time that word will appear. He said again, a little while and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Okay, I want to add chapter 14, verse 16 to 20 to 8, before we start digging deep into this. John 14, verse 16. See, talking about the comforter. Jesus said, and I will pray the Father, and I'll pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever take note of that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you are you seeing that? Do you see that? Don't miss that. Say, you know him. He dwelleth with you. And now he shall be in. Do you see that? So he's talking about himself. So by when we start interpreting, when he said, what he hears, the father say, it's not the Holy Spirit. Go and say, Jesus, what's the father saying? It's one person they're talking about. The father is the father because the word became flesh. So he now had a son like any human could have. But he had a son after his eternal purpose. His eternal plan. Which was to have sons. So the son he had through the womb of a woman has to die for the sons you have through resurrection to come up. That's why we call him father. If not one God. Are you here? So he now said, I will tell the Father. He will send you himself, his spirit. So who is Jesus? That's God in the flesh. When he resurrected, that's the same person. The confusion of Christianity is the thing that God, the Father, then and God the Son, then, and God the Spirit. Uh uh. Dispensationally, God, in His nature as the Word, became flesh. So when He became flesh, there are two entities now, but one person. That's why the Bible put it right without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. Do you hear that? And God was manifest in the flesh. That's First Timothy 3 verse 16. John speaking in the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 14. He said, and the word was made flesh. And dwelt amongst us. The word Emmanuel. You will not see the New Testament. 
Emmanuel. But we saw it practically. He said, God's word became flesh. And a, hum, a human form. But God from above. That means God took flesh and blood because he can't break the protocol of humanity. If he break it, justice will not be served. Judgment will not be fulfilled. The man's of justice will not be fulfilled. If God just came into the world any way he liked, there is no way he can die. So, but for him, for him to fulfill the demands of justice, which is the soul that sinners shall die, is that he must become a man like the Bible put it, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh for sin, that sin will be judged in his body. I'm saying that because we have read, he said, he has been, I have, he has been with you. He would have said, I have been with you, I'll come back to you. He said, he has been with you and he will come back to you. In verse, he said, he will abide with you forever. Look at verse 18, very important. I will not leave you comfortless, fatherless. I won't. I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. He's not talking about living in the human body. He's talking about eternal life. Because I have eternal life. You will live forever. And I said this in verse 20. This is the crystallizing point in that truth. He said, At that day, which is today, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye are in me, and I am in you. It means when that knowing is not there, Christians think that they are just women separated from God. Christians will think that they are just humans separated from God. So they will have a mentality of more of you, more of you, more of you. As if they are pursuing him to grab him. Not knowing that they are in him. He say in that day you see this amalgamation that I am in the father and you are in me. And I am in you. So where you're seated now, with or without your body, you are one with the Father in Christ. I had to do that so I can get into my teaching. If you go back to chapter 14, 16, where we read, Jesus said you cannot bear. I mean, he said to them, they, they, they can't bear it. But when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide them into all truth. Who is the person? He call him their comforter. That's King James language. Other translations will start calling helper. Helper. From New King James Version, they'll say helper. They use the word help. But the word comforter used by Jesus for me is the King James is better for me. Paracletos. Paracletos means one, call to your side to aid you. Call to your side to aid you. So Amplify will say your strength now, your standby, your counselor, your consoler, your Advocates. He said, the one that will give you capacity to be able to bear what I am saying is the Holy Ghost. The spirit of truth. So it means we must get people saved to have the capacity to know their God. To know who they are in Christ. Because until men are saved, they don't have the spirit of God. An unsaved person is a dead person. 
is dead. And since he's dead, he can't know God. Secondly, we must get believers to be in meetings like this to know the comforter. Because it's not enough to be born again. If you take notice, in that day you will know. The word know there is genosko in Greek. It means you are going to come into a realization that will continue. You come into a knowing that will lead you to perfect knowing. And that knowing is born out of intimacy. It's a knowing that is because the knower has valued what he wants to know. That's why all of us seated here, anywhere Christians gather, it is the hunger, it is the passion we have for knowledge that distinguishes us. Actually, spiritual growth is not by age. One, it's not by number of years. Two, it's by hunger. For a man to mature, for a little boy, a toddler, to mature into a man that should marry and have a child, he has to grow in age. Isn't that so? But that is only for spiritual growth, it can only be used metaphorically. Spiritual growth is that somebody can walk into this church today by December, permitting him to be bishops. Listen, it's not just he got knowledge, it's that he's working in it. You know, I hear people say things like this, they are just exhibiting knowledge. Just, I mean, be humble. No, it's an insult on knowledge. Knowledge does not see. The knowledge a man has as a graduate, when he walks into a place where they are undergraduates, he won't humble himself to teach them. I mean, sorry. When he walks into a place where people are in kindergarten, he will allow the person who should teach to teach. But if you say he should teach, he won't humble himself and go and take the curriculum of kindergarten and learn it to come and teach you. That's what many believers are doing. Many believers are doing. They avoid learning. They don't want to learn. Are you here? So when someone grows and is in their midst, sometimes they can use age, use position in church to stifle the person's place of leadership. So he said, when the spirit of, can you put on for me on the screen? When he comes, which he has come, isn't it so? He wasn't even speaking to us. He was talking to them. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. When Jesus said, you can't bear it, he used a word that is, you can't carry it, it's too heavy. Jesus was saying, everything I said, I said it because I want you to prepare for what I'm going to say. So when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what Jesus said, the things he said huh, before his death, that's not the New Testament. The New Testament is in his blood. His blood was not yet shed. He said, the real thing is coming. He said, I have many things to tell you, but not now. You can't bear it. When he, the spirit of truth is come, then he will tell you. Then why didn't he say when he come, you can't bear it? Because the spirit of truth is a capacity. When he comes, now you will not be humans any longer. You will become sons of God. You will become people who are with the spirit of the son of God, the spirit of adoption of sons, now you can be called sons of God. 
you will behave. You can't carry Lego. That word in Greek is Lego. It's written from apple to speak. It's written from lalio, which is to call out or reach out. But when he uses the word Lego, it means to lay forth. Jesus was saying that there's going to be a systematic discourse that you need to participate in. But those discourse, you can't participate until you have the capacity. See, the pain of being a pastor is to watch someone hang around you two years, three years, four years, five, even like this church here, Seven years, eight years, ten years, and the person cannot understand the teaching. Can flow with the teaching. That's the pain of a pastor. It hurts. And sometimes you observe that someone who is just new in church, maybe was a Muslim, was an atheist, and in less than three months, when you're talking, you could see that there's a flow. What happened? He said, when he comes, he will lay it. He will guide you. You must have read one of our favorite parts of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if you're in this church. He said, eyes haven't seen, oh, ears haven't heard. That's verse 9. He hasn't entered the heart of any man to know the things which God has prepared for those who love him. He said, but he has revealed these things, and these things he revealed, he said that the depth of God, he searched the deep things of God, and no man knows what is in the spirit of a man except the spirit of that man. No man knows what is in the mind of God except by the spirit of God. He said, but you have not received the spirit of this word, that you should be stranded, you should not know, but the spirit from God that you may know the things you may be aware. I do. Okay? We know the things freely given to you. He said, these things we speak, not with the wisdom of this world, but with the things that the Holy Ghost have taught, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. He said, but these things, the natural man cannot receive because they are foolishness to him and also these things are spiritually what they said. It's very important that you take note of that, that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, but that the spirit gives knowledge and also gives wisdom to speak. So the things that the Holy Ghost will guide you into, he has taught them. What we read in John 16 verse 12 was not directly spoken to us. It was spoken to some people. And the people he spoke to now wrote it. And they wrote the things that the Holy Ghost guide us into. He said, all truth. All truth. We have capacity to bear it. I like that place. It says, when he comes, he will guide you. He will guide you into all truth. That word guide is important. That's what people are looking for. To guide into all. Leading of the spirit. Leading of the spirit. Bodegio. H-O-D-G-E-O. Bodegio. It means that by his teaching, he will lead you in the way. By, that's what it means. By teaching. The Holy Ghost will take you through the truth. And the truth is a person. It's Christ. Hallelujah. Have they, have they told you stories of somebody before that you have never met? Eh? And you can imagine the person. Isn't it so? You can see the person. Yet you never met him. How many of you have in your ancestry great men and women that they told you of. Huh? They told you of and 
you can see them. You never met them, but you can see them. He's simply saying that the time will come. The Holy Ghost will open you to see Christ. To know him. Guide him to all truth. If you look at that place, it says, he will speak, Lalio. He will speak what he heard. So it means whenever you see anyone speak what is not authorized by God, know that it's not the Holy Ghost speaking. Look at that place again. Look at that. that place. He shall not speak of himself. Jesus added as a clause to help you. A man can use the name of Jesus and do miracles and yet teach you himself and not teach you Christ. And immediately teaching is different from oppression. It means it's not of God. Say with me, it's not of God. I know you say, is it not a miracle in his name? It's a miracle in his name, but it is not of God. It means that the sovereignty of God is disregarded purposefully by a man Willingly by a man. You know the song they sang? The song they sang. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. We are singing the sovereignty of God. We are saying our will, whatever we are by him, is still subject to his sovereignty. Why? Because the sovereignty of God is meek and lowly. The sovereignty of God doesn't budge on men. Not even Satan does the sovereignty of God go against. Not even Satan. Men can go against the sovereignty of God. We are men suffer in the sovereignty of God. It's called time. Say with me, time. That's where they suffer. If a man say there is no God, insult God, maybe walk into, I know of a friend who, some people in that area burn down their church, burn down every other church in that area. And you ask, God, where were you? God, how, how did this happen? Where were you? Mm -mm. The sovereignty of God is meek and lowly amongst men. But time. <laughs> God, it is time to show men <laughs> that they should be submissive to him. So if a man teaches anything, and uses the power of God. The power of God is doing miracles. The power of God is doing mighty works. But the name of Jesus, which, which is used, is not taught. The person is not taught. Say with me, it's not of God. Say it again. I want you to, I want you to say it with your own mouth. Say with me, it's not of God. Say it again. I'm scriptural. Matthew 7, 22-23. Say it's not of God. Second Corinthians, chapter 11, 2-3-4. Say it's not of God. Are you here? I can bring you all. It's not of God. So when the Holy Spirit comes, how do you know? How do you know? He said he will give you words that are already written. That's what he means. They say comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So whatever is the thing you want to say, let's synchronize it. Let compare it. Let match it. If we match it and it fit into what the Holy Ghost has taught, then okay. That's why on Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus said, wait for Mount of Resurrection. On the Mount of Transfiguration, they saw a vision, Matthew 17. The vision is, it said Jesus' figure was transfigured before them. That even brighter than the sunlight. And then, two spirits of just men appeared. That of Moses, that of Elijah. And when they appeared, they began to talk to Jesus on that mouth. And when they were talking to Jesus, they were discussing what will happen in the future. The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then Peter and Co, who were asleep, woke up in their sleep. They saw the vision. And as they saw the vision, you know what they did? They, they, Peter spoke because he's the leader of the apostles there. He spoke and said, Jesus, we won't leave this mountain. This is a great mountain. Let's build three tabernacles in the, on this mountain. 
One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Immediately the cloud took them. And the voice of God went straight. He said, "Mm -mm. this one, Jesus, is my beloved son. Him shall you hear. Did you hear that? Him shall you hear. He is the one that will speak, not Elijah. Not Moses. So after saying it, Jesus didn't say anything. No. But when the vision was over, Jesus said to them, whatever you saw here, you see it in Matthew 17, verse number 10. Put it, let, let, let me read for you. So whatever you saw here, do not discuss it until I'm risen. Do you know why many believers are begging the Holy Spirit to know what he's doing? They don't know what he came to do. Look at it. Matthew 17, verse 10. Are you put there? And as his disciples asked him, saying, why then say Please give me verse 9. And it came down from the mountain. Jesus charged them. Anytime you see the word charged, it's man, his command. He's a pastor Isaac was a military man. When there is a charge in the army, when there is, when even Buhari now, who is the commander chief of Amphal, if he says anything, the course, the head, the Commander of, uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, army. Who sent to everybody. Immediately. He said, open the border. He opened the border. Jesus said, I, he said, listen. Charge them saying, tell the vision to no man until the son of man be risen again from the dead. So Jesus knew that men cannot understand the operation of the spirit. Until they are born of the spirit. When he's risen, men will be born of the spirit. I'm very slow. Stop sleeping. For a purpose. We just came out from two weeks of praying in the Holy Ghost. And you saw miracles. I want to bring you to the place of functioning in the Holy Ghost. You hear that? So now, Jesus is risen. Look at what Peter said. Second Peter, chapter 1, verse number 15. Ever look at this. When he, the spirit is come, he will guide into all truth, into knowing Jesus. Peter said, Moreover, I will endeavor that ye be able, ye may be able after my decease to have this, these things always in remembrance. Verse 16. Look at this. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We have not followed men's drama. Men's Nollywood. Uh-uh. We, when we made known unto you the, the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are eyewitnesses of his majesty on that mountain. Next verse. For he, he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Next verse. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Next verse. We have also a more sure, a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto the a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Next verse. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of private interpretation. Next verse. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Whenever they use the word prophecy in the New Testament, they are talking about Moses to all the prophets. They are talking about Genesis to all the prophets. Moses being the one who brought the doctrine of the scripture the writer, from what he wrote in Genesis to all the prophets. He said, he said, this prophecy is better when it comes to interpreting Christ. He said, we carry it. We pay attention. They say, give it. 
we pay attention to it like a man carries light in dark places and will hold the light until the day dawns and the day star is risen. Here I say day star risen in your heart. It means the scripture is the one that reveals Jesus in your heart. So Jesus said when he comes, he will not speak by himself, of himself. When the Holy Ghost comes, he will not. Then it means whatever he says must be verified. How will you verify it? you find it in the scripture. He gave the scripture. That's why in the New Testament, they'll say things like my gospel according to the scripture. Let's look at it. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse, verse 1 to 4. Four. Look at it. Even if you take me much time to do my teaching, but let me put you aright. Praise the Lord. 15 verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Next verse. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Next verse. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Next verse. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Why according to the scriptures? Who revealed this to him? The Holy Ghost. But according to the scriptures. According to Genesis to Malachi. I mean, Genesis to the last prophet. Even to John the Baptist, the last prophet. Because Malachi was not the last prophet. John the Baptist was the last prophet. He listened to them. Now I showed you from Peter. Peter said we have led vision. We, we had the voice. Yes. But we have a more sure word. Bebeos. We have something that keeps us firm, rooted. That we are not shaking. He says prophecy. Okay, look at Jesus. He rose from the dead. Luke 24, from verse 24. Look at Jesus. He rose from the dead. Look at what happened. He said. And certain of them, which we are, that's his disciples, we are confused about resurrection. We are talking. Which we are with us, went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him the saw not. Next verse. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Always, always, let me tell you something. Be, be serious with yourself. Be serious. Don't let people make fool of you. Don't let people make fool of you. Anyone who teaches you outside of Christ is making a fool of you. And every time you find it difficult to believe what God has said about you in Christ, and what he said, Concerning Christ, you make a fool of yourself. The word fool, always used in the New Testament, is to address unbelief of believers. Address doubt of believers. Address fear of believers. Look at what Jesus said next to them. Look at what Jesus said. Can you give me verse 26? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and entered into his glory? Can we go to verse 25 again? He said, 25 please. He said, look at this. Then he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, all that Moses to John has spoken. There was no romance then. New Testament writing has not come into. New Testament has been enacted because it's reason, but it has not been written. So they were all teaching from the prophets. Are you here? Now look at verse 27. So the summary of the prophets ought not Christ to have suffered eh? and enter into his glory. That's what Peter also said. That this prophet saw salvation and prophesied the grace that will come to us. And he said what they saw is that the Holy Ghost ministered to them that he will suffer and enter into his glory. So the whole experience of the believer is death Burial, resurrection. That's it. The whole scripture, that's what it is. So Jesus, and beginning at Moses, and all the prophets, he expounded. This word expounded is very important. It means that Jesus brought them to terms of what is being spoken 
by bringing them out of their ignorance through interpretation. It's just like someone is speaking in Yoruba language and he's talking. Then when he talk, 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 Pratola uh, will start my pastor. This was the same. So I'm not, I'm not confused. Not so. It's that Jesus came. Interpretation is key to fellowship. Reading Bible is not enough. It's to interpret what you read. That's why sometimes he will say in the Greek because it was written in Greek and Hebrew. It wasn't written in English. You don't use English dictionary to read Bible. The English language that you are reading is not the interpretation of what you are reading. Are you here with me? Very important. So when he finished, what was, what was the focus of his teaching? Things concerning himself. So when he, the spirit of truth, come, he will guide you into all truth to know him. Until you know him, you don't know yourself. The revelation of Jesus is the manifestation of the sons of God. When sons of God carry manifestation, it means revelation of Christ is unknown. Did you hear what I said? Stunted growth is because revelation is either unknown or not accepted. This is Jesus talking. Now look at verse 44. Verse 32 first. 32. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn with us while he yet talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? Let me share 31 so you can see something. I'm really spending time here because it's not part of my teaching, but to help you why Jesus said when he comes, he will not speak of his own authority. So that you watch when people are speaking. A good story told in a teaching in church is not good story. Only the good news it's a story. Now look at this. And their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Why did he vanish? Then I ask you, why did he vanish? He doesn't want you to know him by appearance. By apparition. Eh, eh, by revelation. You hear what I said? He doesn't want you to say, this is what he looks like. This is how he looks like. Then they paint a picture and put on the pulpit. They say the picture of Jesus. How? Who was there to snap him? Who was there? Who was the artist that took time? Do you know what they say about Jesus? Did he, he has no appearance that they want. It's not like David though, that was so beautiful. Though. Then he died. Nobody could recognize him in death. He was so dealt with on the cross. That when he died, you, can't, you, you don't know where his eyes is or where his nose is. You can't tell where he, he the, the, Jesus was beaten head to toe. His nails are not even there any longer. So who snapped him? How come when he resurrected and met them, they could not, they don't know him? It means the risen body could be touched and felt what cannot be known by touching and feeling. I repeat so that you know that. The risen body could be touched. You feel the palms. But listen. Thomas, you wouldn't know me by touching me. So the Holy Ghost came to lead us into that truth. Jesus went ahead to open their understanding to understand the scripture in verse 45. Why is it that what Jesus was interested after resurrection is to open them to know the scripture? A scriptureless church is a wicked church. I don't care how big it is. That man of God that stands telling story and doing miracle is a wicked man. Very wicked. When would their heart burn? He said, we talk to them and open the scriptures. Why didn't Jesus just come to and say, hey, you don't know me. I ate with you the other day now. I told you I would die now. I'm risen, Jare. I slap you now. Then do some, some gra, 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 gra. That's why for 40 days after resurrection, not one miracle did Jesus do. Not one. Because 
Miracle is not to be put in front. Miracle should be put behind. So your need, if you put in front, you never know Jesus. You never know him. If your need goes before you, you will not like a church like Christfulness Church. You won't. You won't like a teaching church. You will not. As a matter of fact, you may, you may even go to the church of cockroaches. We are cockroach is leading as long as it can scratch your back. If you don't take time. Because man is a needy man. Man will never leave need. The man whose need was on money. Oh, yeah, I want to be rich. And becomes rich. Go meet him. He has a bigger need than money. Need? Need doesn't leave anybody. No matter how you speak in tongues. No matter how you speak in tongues, he can't leave you. If you want need to leave, you leave this world. Just die and go. You still have a need. All your good plans is a need. All your good intention is a need. I want to build an orphanage is a need. I want to feed the poor is a need. I want to do this is a need. I want to build a conglomerate where I will be able to affect my nation is a need. I want to do so, so, so is a need. I want to go to school, become a PhD holder, be a lecturer, become a professor is a need. It's a need. That thing is a need. Immediately you step into it, the need keeps expanding itself and will never close. The needless man is a dead man. So, since it's going to be like that, you must put it behind. He opened them to understand the scriptures. I did all this because I wanted to understand the ministry of the comforter. If you tell me, say, you speak. If you tell me, said he, he will do something. He said, he will show you things to come. In that place, it, things to come is things about you in Christ. It's things God have done for you in Christ. Now, it's not, he'll show you things to come, show you the war, that will, the nation that will fight against. Hey, he, he prophesied and that Russia will be in trouble. He prophesied that Ukraine will be in trouble. Have you noticed such things since the war started? The ashamed men of God. The worst man of God to ever deal with is a man of God that prophesied about nations and live Christ. I, listen, if, if you have an ear, hear me now. You see all those people that prophesy who will die and who will not die. Who will fail this election that is coming and who will not fail? Avoid them quickly. Because when Jesus set up his ministry, eh, he told us what the ministry would do. He gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints. Did you hear what I said? For the equipping of the saints. Did you hear what I said? That the saints will do what? The work of ministry and do what? Edify the body of Christ. And they will keep equipping and doing work of ministry and edifying the body. Until we all come to the unity of the faith, which is the real unity. Our garden is not the unity. If we have division here, it's because there is no unity of faith. People are, hey, the church is not united. It's a lie. The body of Christ has never been dismembered. Did you hear what I said? It's called unity of the spirit. Kept with the bond of peace. Are you here with me? Kept with the bond of peace. But where there is no unity of the faith, there is every assurance that me and that prophet will never agree. What are we going to sit down together? Is it to share money? Am I sharing money? What am I going to sit down together with you? It's to fellowship. And if we are going to fellowship, it must be in the knowledge of the son. To the unity of faith, which is in the knowledge of the Son. You know what he said? So that we henceforth, no, he said, so that, you know, we come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. That's what it means. It means in our oppression, who we are in Christ will be what will manifest. And we no longer are children tossed to and fro, carried about, heat and teeter, by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men. That crafty light in way to deceive. But rather grow up into Christ in every way, speaking the truth in love. So, hey, he's a prophet to the nation. No, every prophet is to the body of Christ. That's why he said to Timothy, I kept you in Ephesus for a purpose. That nobody teaches any other teaching but the teaching of Christ. 
and do not participate in all these stories and endless genealogies that does not pro, you know, produce faith, but rather cast fear on men. He said, and what those who are teaching the law, they don't know what Gentiles who teach the law, knowing not what they're saying or what they're affirming. In verse 18, he said, I charge you. According to the prophecy that went ahead of it, people will use it. Every prophecy they gave me, eh, eh. Prophecy that went ahead is Christ. Why a good warfare? And in way good warfare, hold on to faith, which is Christ. Hold on to what you are taught in Christ with a good conscience, with consciousness of who you are in Christ, what Christ has done for you. He says some who rejected have made a shipwreck of their faith. Are you getting that? So when the Holy Ghost comes, he, he say he will show you things to come. No, he's not going to show you how by I will become rich or poor. And you're going to ask me now, say, Pastor, then how do people know? By the gift of the Spirit. By the gift of the Spirit, they can't know things. But that's not what the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost is different from the Holy Ghost. The person of Christ in you called the Holy Ghost is to teach you Christ. But he gave you gifts. Go read about the gift. The gifts you are given for you to minister to one another, not for you to minister to people outside. Who will be president makes no meaning to me. That's why many things we see, we don't even talk about them. It's not necessary. And I saw that you end up marrying a bad man. Why do I come and tell you? When I know if I teach you, 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 you enter the place of discerning good things. If I tell you now, you can fearfully see, enter it. But you know what? You praise me and say, my pastor can see. My pastor can see. That's why when Paul talks about vision and revelation, he said, I will not boast in vision. He said, I know a man 14 years ago, whether in his body or out of his body, taken up to third heaven, to the paradise, and he heard unspeakable things. He said, this one I will not boast of, but I will boast in my infirmities. Why? Infirmities is a product of revelation. He said, he came because of much revelation. Why did he say, I will not boast? That's what men boast on. You call them mighty men of God. He can see. No, 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 no. We are not called to be telling people visions. We are called to reveal Christ. That's what the Holy Ghost came to do. Are you here with me? This means I'm not even, out of 10 things, I've not even said finish one. But it's to help you, praise the Lord. And he says something else. He said, when he comes, he will take the things of the father, which are my things, and he shall show you. That was what he declared, anangelo in Greek. He will declare it, he will announce it to you. Show. It means you are a son with an inheritance. And your inheritance have made you a joint heir with Christ. He said, all that the father has is mine. He will take all that the father has, which is mine, and now show it to you. So you can now see what the Holy Ghost came to do. He came to reveal to you your status in God and what you own in God. And that cannot be telling you about uh, who wants to kill you. It cannot be telling you about uh, who will kill you or who will keep your life. No. The capacity is given so that you can be able to know your inheritance. We have the Holy Spirit for that purpose. Are you here with me? For that reason. Amen. So the comforter comes that you may know your inheritance. Not many know their inheritance. Not many. It's so sad that every day in church you notice that both the pastors and the members don't know their inheritance. Because there's a way you talk about inheritance, it means you don't know inheritance. When you start talking about inheritance as land, you don't know inheritance from the father. Is it true? What will my father leave for me on earth? Heavenly or earthly things? Answer me. Earthly things. What will my heavenly father leave for me? Heavenly things. Yep. So when I see you talking about inheritance as earthly, 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 earthly things, I know that you don't know the inheritance you're talking about. So, or if you talk about it, you must put a dichotomy. You must separate it. You must not mix it. 
It's like the word blessing. The word blessing. When we use the word blessing, now I can bless you with a thing. If you prayed about it, desired it, and it came to pass, you now say, God has blessed me with that. Is it not so? As an answer prayer. But yet there's a blessing that you didn't pray for. Is it not true? Blessed be the God and for our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. He began to list them, list them, list them, list them, list them. One of the blessings he gave to you is that he said that you have redemption in his blood. That means you can never again accept sin and death to put you down. You have been redeemed from it. He said even the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which are bounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. You can't buy that. The things of the father are mine. He will show them to you. We have the capacity to bear the leading, the guidance of the Holy Ghost. We have the capacity. The purpose of God, no matter how, you know, how, how foolish is to human beings, we are not just humans. We are sons of God. He guides us into that truth. Please get that. Do you know that you don't need to be asking God, show me who to marry? Do you know that? Do you know that the more you ask, the more you not know? Because the worst thing to do is to shut down a process or a protocol and use the one that is not for it. Can you imagine that you start building your own staircase behind to enter my office? Just imagine that. Just imagine that. Start building your own. They ask you what to say. I want to be able to assess Papa's office. There's one already. There's a reception. There are doors leading to my office. Already created. You still find out how to assess them. Beside that you are born again. That you are now in the same nature as God. Which means that the wisdom of God should flow to you freely. Do you know you can just sit and say, that's my wife. And you get married. So you ask pastor, is, that, is it that easy? Yes, that's the entry point. When you said it, the girl doesn't know. Then you take it to your table of planning. Sorting out. In sorting out, this is what you're going to do. Who is this girl? Who knows this girl? Where is she from? What is she doing? How is she doing it? In church, then you just throw it like that and say, cross. There's a girl I'm seeing. She looks like a person to marry. Then everybody say, huh? You've seen it? That's the girl. Though. You go to mothers, the same thing. You know people don't know how to do things. They say, like, hey, show me my wife. Show you what? He that find it. It's a Hebrew word that means he that encounters. You have been encountering your wife. I say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost leads us in the purpose of God. I'll talk, I'll talk about that. Marriage is not the purpose of God. It's your own purpose. Who you marry doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You are the one that chooses a black one, a fair one, a short one, a tall one, a fat one. You are the one that chooses. These are not from God. The God told me I will marry a white person. You are a liar. It's your greed and stupidity that is affecting you. You're lost. Even where to work, career. Just be smart. And tell yourself, there are things I like. There are things people like. They must match. What you like, people don't like it. You'll be a poor man. How many of you barb hair when they use clipper? You know clipper? Uh, your young people here. Clipper is clipper. The other one is called, it's not clipper, they call it. It's barbie machine, or not clipper. Clipper must, you must, the word clipper, you must, you must press it. Clipper. 
Did you bury at that time? How many of you know that in that time, the people move around from village to village and carry one heavy seat? The seat can kill somebody today. One heavy seat like that, that day. Baba's chair. They will come to our village. We all gather. Imagine you start that kind. You say, I like it. I like I saw it somewhere. They show me that that's how they used to bob hair in, the, in those days. I like it. Then you go and buy a clipper and carry that chair. Only you. With your likeness, only you. <laughs> You'll be bobbing yourself. So it's easy. I must know the will of God. I'm going to fast for two weeks uh, to know what's the will of God concerning my career. Eh, eh. You are not thinking. You are not using your brain. Your common sense is not used very well. Holy Ghost came to guard you into all truth. So that you, you know what to pray about. Do you notice what I said in serving him in Romans 12? He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to do what? Present. What do you present? Your bodies. How? A living sacrifice. Holy. And accepted unto God. Agri- fully agreeable with God. He said, that's your rational. That's your rational service. How will you do it? He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. How will you be transformed? How will your mind be renewed? By you proving what is the good an acceptable and perfect will of God. That word dokimazo in Greek is it by you investigating and approving. You! It means the leading of the spirit you are participating by permitting what is already known, said, the, the logos of God, which is written, God's scripture, to become what you believe in, what you have accepted. Ha. Then the spirit leads you. It means that doesn't happen, you will not lead you there. Some people like ministries, though, from suit, from the money people give us, from the things that people give us. You mean this house you're living, someone gave it to you. You don't pay rent. Someone gave you this house. Ah, I'll be a pastor. I'll be a pastor. Don't you see how Papa walk? Always wearing very good shoes. Good shirt. But a person have not looked where to see that is one shoe. There is no Sunday people don't praise my shoe. No Sunday. I say, thank God, the glory of God is upon it. They have not looked where to see that is one shoe. Eh? Are you getting what I say? If that is why Clement wants to be a pastor, to wear shoe, to wear shoe. You soon know. You know that Jesus himself, God left him, left him to know the will and to accept the will. I think in second second, when I begin to deal with grief not the spirit, lie not to the spirit or lie not about the spirit and wait not the spirit. I'll show you what it means to say grief not the spirit. Why would Jesus come to the place of prayer at the time of sorrow? He's begging God. He said, Father, I know that with you all things are possible. That means you can do all things. Okay? He said, but let this cup pass over. Yet not my will, your will be done. Where did he learn the will? Hebrews 10 tells us in the scripture. I, he saw it in the volume of the books. So when the Bible says how you're going to serve God is that you'll be transformed by the renewing of your mind, having proved what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It means that, that, that you are malleable in the hands of the spirit by you willingly without the spirit pushing you, submitting yourself to the things of the spirit. That's why not many people are led by the spirit. Not many people. Are you here with me? I'm coming from a meeting with my father-in-law. And when he's talking, I said, I said, Papa, you have always been a different man. For you to transit, 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 transit. Just in a few years, it's a seed. You are a global warrior of this message for over 50 years. He 
gave himself completely. He comes from God. I don't hear what God is saying. Why will you hear when you don't? You think that prayer is an easy thing? Prayer is a hard task. It involves the body. It involves time. And many times of prayer are not conducive times. Morning, night. They are not conducive. Between morning and night is work. Work. They are not. Have you noticed that when sleep affects you, it's early morning and late in the night. Have you noticed it? Except, except a different being. I come and tap the grace that you have. Like a palm wine. But I can tell you the truth. No matter how you have slept, as you are waking up, immediately you want to start to pray. Your flesh said, you have not slept enough. Oh. That's why it's tasking. What do you do? You set yourself up in the spirit. It's a how be it in the spirit. You open up what your ears cannot hear. Open up your ears to what you couldn't hear. How will you know the scripture? How will you be able to interpret Leviticus and Hebrews together? How will you be able? How will you be able to know that Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 is the entire, is the entire purpose of God? Genesis 3 is the failure of God. And Jesus coming is the resurrection of man back to Genesis 1 and 2. How would you know such things? Hello. 